Good morning, Hope Chapel, Kona. Welcome. Welcome. Would you do this with me? Would you stand to welcome our Lord Jesus Christ, who is already in the house? His presence is here. His word says where two or more are gathered together, he is here. And he is ready to move. He is ready to work. He is ready to answer all of your requests on his, on his, in the name of his, in the powerful name of Jesus. Would you do this? Would you just begin to put your hands together? We bless you, Lord. We worship you. We thank you. We thank you that you are the faithful God, that you are the good God, that you are a God that loves, that you are steadfast and constant. We love you, Jesus. Let's worship the Lord this morning. God of Abraham, you're the God of covenant, of faithful promises. Time and time again, you have proven, you do just what you say. Though the storms may come and the winds may blow, I'll remain steadfast and let my heart learn. God, from age to age, though the earth may pass away, your word remains the same. Yeah, yeah, your history can prove there's nothing you can't do. You're faithful and true. Though the storms may come and the winds may blow, I'll remain safe. Put my faith. 
You're faithful through the ages. Faithful through the ages. And mountains are still being moved. And strongholds are still being moved. And God, we believe. Yes, we can see that wonders are still Giants are still being raised. Giants are still being saved. And now we believe, yes, we can see. Wonders are still what you do. We are here for you. Come on, lift it up, Pope Chapel. Come and do what you that's what we came to do, say it. We are here for you. Yes, Jesus. Come and do what you do. Set our hearts. Set our hearts on you. Come and do it, God. Come and do it. Because we need, we need a move. We need it, Jesus. We need it. Come on, let's sing that second verse. Here we go. Hey, bodies are still being raised. Yeah. Come on. Giants are still being slain. God, God, we believe. Yes, we can see it. Yes, we can Come see Come on, sing it out. Wonders are still what you do. We are here. We are here. Oh. Wait. 
sing this with me. I need to move. I need to move. I'm moving. I'm moving towards you, Jesus. I need to move. Sing that over your heart. I need to move. I need to move. You know, as the band continues to play, I was reminded this morning of the story of Jesus as he was continuing to minister from town to town in the temple and the synagogue. There's a story of a gentleman, and it says this of him. He says that he had a shriveled hand. And what we know about that word shriveled is, is it wasn't working. It, wasn't, it was deformed. And as Jesus looks at him, he says, stretch out your hand. And in that moment, it might sound insensitive of Jesus. Why would Jesus tell someone who has a shriveled hand that has never been able to stretch out that hand to stretch out? And yet the very invitation of Jesus at that moment was not to belittle him or single him out as a cripple, but it was to invite him in to the very act of faith and the miracle that he was about to provide. That at the moment the man would reach out in faith to Jesus with his heart was the very moment that Jesus had already planned to make his move and heal him. But so often Jesus says, would you make your move? I'm here, I'm ready, I'm willing. But would you make your move, stretch out your hand and say, Jesus, I'm here, would you heal me? Would you touch me? There's nothing else and no one else in this world that can do it. And so even as we sing, I need to move, can that be our act of faith? to reach out to the very one, the very presence and power of Jesus to say, I'm making a move. Jesus, make your move. Because how many of you would say this morning you need a touch from Jesus? Whether that's a physical healing, a spiritual healing, maybe even an emotional or mental healing. You're saying this morning, I need a touch from Jesus. So would you do that, church? Would you reach out your hand? Stretch out your hand in that act of faith to say, Lord, I need to move. And I know you're ready to move on my behalf. So sing that with me as that act of faith. Oh, I need to move. Sing that. I need to move. I'm moving towards you, Jesus. I need to move. Oh, we're moving. We're moving. I need to move. Increase our faith, increase our faith. I need to move. I'm moving. I need to move. I need to move. Oh, I need to move. Lord, make you move. Jesus, we love you. Oh, how we love you. You are the one our hearts adore. We love Jesus, we love you.
despite life circumstance, despite whatever it is that we walked in with, our king is seated on the throne. And we worship you, we adore you, because you're the only one who's worthy of our praise. And so we turn our hearts to you this morning, Jesus. We fix our eyes on you, the author and the perfecter of our faith. And God, we, we trust you. Even in the midst of an earthquake and things shaking around, Lord, we trust you. We choose to fix our eyes on the hills because we know our help is coming. We thank you that you are a good king who chose to walk among his people and die for them. And to not just die, but to raise for them. 
And so we thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. If you guys are near any cakey, would you just lay your hands and or reach your hands towards them? Lord, we thank you for these lives. We thank you for the calling and the anointing that you've placed on them, the destiny that, that you have for them, the good plans. And thank you that you trust us to steward that. And so, Lord, we just, we ask that you would speak and that their ears would hear you and that we would hear from the mouth of babes the truth of the Lord. We would hear prophetic words and visions, and we would hear, we would hear encouragement and, and words of life. God, we thank you that you're pouring out your spirit among, among our keiki. Yeah, that's right. And that they will lead the way. We just thank you, Lord. We thank you for them, and we pray that you would, you would pour out your, your presence and your spirit on our teachers and those serving in the classes. We thank you, Jesus. We pray you would bless them that you would, that the joy of the Lord would be their strength. And we, we send them out, Lord Jesus. Pray this in your name. Amen. Well, I can't see, but <laughs> we got littles. If you're one to five, you're going to exit over here. And then kiddos, six to 11 is back in this corner. And would you guys just take a minute to greet those around you? Say good morning to your family.
Hadi. We've got a couple announcements before we get started today. So first of all, welcome, especially if this is your first time here. Um, first, I want to point out the QR code. I think it's behind me. It's also on the paper that we handed out. So if you scan that, that's just a way to learn, learn more about the church. And if you're visiting here and just want to learn more about different events or things that are happening here, you can just find it by scanning the QR code. Um, there's water and there's coffee that's available, some snacks, oh no stuff in the back there if you guys are hungry or want anything to drink. And uh, we're also on Facebook and YouTube, just so you guys know. So if you guys ever miss a service or just want to see it afterwards, you guys can go on there and you can watch the whole service in its entirety. So um, I'm excited to announce, and I'm going to be there, there's going to be an all men's retreat coming up this weekend. So I'm going to be there, Jacob's going to be there. Brother Adam Rice might be there, um, but it's going to be with us and also with New Hope Waikoloa, and it's going to be in Kapa Ao at the Makapala Retreat Center. So that's 12 beautiful acres. That's where there's little drizzly showers and rainbows every single day. So it's going to be really awesome. And today is the last day that you can sign up for it, and it's $60. And if you want to sign up for it, just talk to Pastor Albert right over here. And something else I'm also excited to announce. So we're gonna be having Neon Night with our youth this coming Sunday. And we're gonna be doing that right here at Kamu uh, Makualani. So we're gonna be like blacking out this whole slider over here. So if you wanna bring like a white shirt or anything that's fluorescent, we're gonna have glow sticks and we're gonna have music. And so it's gonna be the one time in your Christian walk when you can play with glow sticks with a bunch of people. So that's gonna be fun. So just talk to Emily if you have any questions. Uh, she's the person that's going to be running it. And also, so this isn't next Sunday, it's the Sunday after that. Uh, Brother Kahu Kiha is gonna be coming here and he's gonna be talking to us just a little bit about kind of um, walking the Christian walk here in Hawaii. And so especially if it's any questions just about how, you know, kind of Hawaiian cultural traditions are gonna be interacting with, with Jesus and Christianity. That's his specialty, so he's going to be talking about that here, not this coming Sunday, uh, but the Sunday after that. And that's a good thing to, for all of you guys to come to. That's good for kids, that's good for adults, that's good for everyone to come and listen to. So tithes and offerings. So our church is kind of doing a lot more stuff right now. We're getting involved in, in more mission work, more stuff in the community. So the tithes are, are really going to make a big difference, and we're really just kind of doing more and more, so we appreciate that. So there's, there's two ways to give. There's just the old-fashioned way. We have that giving box at the back over there, so you can just donate over there. Or you can uh, go online to the, to the Church Center app, or if you just go to hopechapelkona.com, there's a little tab that says Give on there, and you can go on there, and that's another way that you can just give and just support this church all of us here and uh, support our ministries. So I'm just going to pray just over the tithes and just get us started today. So Father God, just thank you, Lord, so much for today. Thank you, Lord, for your, your creativity and your wisdom that's just so evident here in Kona today. Just the, the rain, the, the ocean, the, the trees, and just all these things around us that just show us just how creative and how intelligent you are, Father God. And I pray that you help all of us just focus on you, the creator, the painter, Father God, and not just the creation and the painting, Father God. And I pray that you just, just clear out our minds and just let us be open to your word today. So just all those distractions, that, that phone in your pocket, that TV show we were watching yesterday, those temptations, those resentments, those different things that are just in our mind. I pray that's just a mist, Father God, that you just blow away so we can just, just be clear here in church today and we can just hear Pastor Bam, just listen to his word. And I pray that you just anoint Pastor Bam like you've done so many times before, Father God, and just let us all just be receptive to your word, Father God. In the name of Jesus, amen. Thank you, Max. Can we give Max a round of applause? What's good? Ah, oh, thank you so much. What's up, Hope Chapel Corner? Yeah? Come on, turn to your neighbor and smile at them. Say hi. Hi, neighbor. How are you doing? Yeah. If you ain't got a neighbor, smile at God. Praise the Lord. 
Hey, I just, uh, just a quick announcement for our men's retreat. I know it's like a two-day retreat. Uh, if you want to sign up for one day, you still can if, if the next day doesn't work for you. So uh, be sure just to sign up. Uh, I tell you what, Satan is out to attack us guys. Uh, there's been what I call the curse of taking responsibility has permeated from the days of Adam even till now. And so the last thing Satan wants for you is for you to take responsibility and take ownership of God's calling over your life. And so let's not waste a moment, man. Get, get, get connected. Sign up for this men's retreat. I could guarantee you this. You will come out better and stronger. And your spouse will probably love you even more <laughs> when you come back. Amen? Uh, can we give God a, all the glory this morning? <laughs> Praise the Lord. Woo. Well, welcome and good morning for those of you tuning in. Online, what's up? How's it? Aloha. It's good to see you. Aloha. Welcome. Thank you for joining us today where we are on a message series. I love this message series. We are on a message series on freedom, rooted in freedom. Rooted. Jesus came to set the captives free. He came to set the captives free. And so therefore stand fast in the freedom by which Christ has set you free. For who the Son sets free free is free indeed and Jesus came to release us men and women children from the bondages that often prohibit us from expressing him so he came to set us free and today I want to talk to us about the things that we say how many of you guys know that what you say matters what you say matters why because words have power Words have, have weight. You could either speak words that help or you could speak words that hurt. You could speak words that encourage or you could speak words that discourage. You could speak words that build up or you could speak words that break down. Our words have power and our words have weight. I got to say that one of my joys in life right now is that my daughter, Ave, she doesn't know it, but she is my accountability partner. She puts me in check and she holds me accountable on the things that I say. And so, I mean, I don't forget that I'm Christian. I do forget that I'm a human being. And so every now and again, I come home grumpy. How many of you guys have come home grumpy? Like there's no food, dishes are in the sink, and you're looking around like, does anybody live here? And so you walk into your house and you get all negative. And then my daughter, she has this phrase. She would often say to me when she sees me saying negative things and becoming just negative, she would say this, hey, Dad, how's the septic tank today? <laughs> Picture that. So really what she's saying is that I'm just spending my whole life and this day in the septic systems of, of life. And so my attitude stinks and the words that I say stink as well. Now she has a new phrase. Yeah. So whenever I come home and I'm all grumpy and I got a negative attitude, she would say this. She would say this. She goes, she would say, hmm, someone's being a little pessy today. <laughs> And I'm like, what's, what's a pessy? She goes, you know, a pessimist, a pessimistic, those who have no, say nothing but pessimism, like the glass is always half empty, everything is wrong in this house, there's negative this, negative that. So she'll call me, she'll call me pessy. That's her new thing. Why? Because my daughter knows that what I say can change the atmosphere of my house. The words that I speak can either make my wife happy or make her angry. Why? Because my words have power. Your words have power. What you say matters. Now, today I want to take a more specific approach. I'm going to get all up in your grill. I'm going to take a more specific approach about negative words. And, and, and I want to address this point. You see, it's one thing to say negative things to others. It's another thing for you to say negative things over yourself. Hello! So I want to talk to us about that. You see, it's one thing for other people to say negative things about you. It's another thing for you to agree to it and speak them over yourself. It's one thing for other people to write bad stuff about you on Facebook, snap a chat, whatever. It's one thing for other people to say negative things about you. It's another thing for you to agree to it and make it your truth. Woo! That's a whole different ballgame. And so I feel that the Lord has sent me here today to remind you that you do not need to agree with what Satan says about you. 
The Lord has sent me today to remind you that you do not need to agree to the lies that Satan has said over your life. He is a liar and a father of lies. You do not need to agree to the deception, to the condemnation, to the curses. You do not need to, dis to agree to the discouragement that Satan has over you. Just don't buy it. Reject it. Say, bye, Felicia. I don't need you. Come on, somebody praise the Lord. Those words are just set you free right there. How's that for an intro? That's a pretty good intro. I feel like everybody's on this bus. Let's go, bam. We're on the bus. And so today, the title of this sermon is called Stop the Negative Self-Talk. Turn to about three people and say, stop it, 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 stop the negative talk. Stop the negative self-talk. Okay, here, let's talk about negative words. Let's talk about negative words. What's the big deal with negative words? Why should I care about negative words? Jot this down in your main, one of your bullet points. Negative words destroy. Negative words destroy. I, I did a lot of premarital counseling in my previous career. <laughs> and, and, and one of the things that I was always counseled of uh, the couple, I, 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 would, I would say to this, I would say that complaining is negative thoughts becoming audible. And complaining will suck the life out of your marriage. And I'll tell the wife, wife, you don't have to, you don't have to say everything that comes to your mind. <laughs> you see, negative words to me, listen, if, if you, let's just be real. Negative words to me is like weapons of mass destruction. Think about that. Negative words are weapons of mass destruction. They don't just destroy you. They destroy everyone else around you. Negative words destroy. If you don't believe me, the Bible says this, Proverbs 18, 21. On a count of three, let's read it. Casi lua colu. Say it. Death and life are in the power of the tongue, and those who love it will eat its fruit. What's in the power of the tongue? Death and life. What's in the power of what you say? Death and life. You see, we can speak life. When you speak life, you speak words that encourage, that edify, that build up, that correct. And that just the people feel better after having a conversation with you. That's when you know that you're speaking in the spirit of life. But if you speak in the spirit of death, you are prophesying and proclaiming a curse over that individual, including yourself. Whew. How many of you guys have played uh, Jenga? Yeah, I'm going to play Jenga. So to me, negative words, it's like removing a Jenga piece. Over a period of time, removing it. Over a period of time. And I know we local folks, we like to act tough. Sticks and stones, they break my bones, but words, they never hurt me. That attitude is saying that those words are hurting you. And so it's like playing Jenga, negative words. It's like removing piece by piece by piece by piece by piece. You think you're still strong, but over a period of time, those negative words will take its toll, and the marriage house falls, and the family house falls, and your relationship with coworkers falls. Why? Because of negative words. They are weapons of mass destruction. Amen? Ooh, this sounds so good. I think I'm going to go home and rewatch this live stream. <laughs> Hear myself. Preach this to myself, because this is some good stuff. What else about negative words destroyed? So where do negative words come from? Like, how does it start? How about this? Jot this down. Negative talk comes from negative thoughts. Whew. Hello, somebody. Negative talk comes from negative thoughts. You ever have somebody tell you, like, just speak your mind? Do you know how much trouble we get with you speaking your mind? <laughs> I've learned this quote, man. You could, you, could, you, could, you, could, you, could, you could write it down if you remember it. If not, go watch this live stream because it's going to be pretty awesome. <laughs> I've, learned, I've, I've heard this quote and I thought it was really good. It said this, it's a dangerous thing to mistake speaking without thought for speaking the truth. Wow. Boy, people get paid billions of dollars saying things like that. I give to you for free. It's a dangerous thing. To mistake speaking without thought 
for speaking the truth. Amen? Negative talk comes from negative thoughts. The book of Proverbs chapter 23 verse 7 states this on account of three. Let's read it. Say it. For as he thinks in his heart, so is he. Do you know what that means? That means you are what you think. You say what's in your thoughts. You, I, when, I, when, I, when I think of the word thoughts, I think of this like this storage container. And, 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 and like the storage container is just filled with all kinds of thoughts. See, I get one for you. It's my visual aid. It's my visual aid. And so, so, so your thoughts are often occupied by stuff. And, and, and if, you, if, if, if your thought is just like full of negative stuff, you pull out negative things. Have you ever tried to deposit negative dollars in your bank account? <laughs> and then try and go withdraw it the next day? <laughs> what do you get? Negative. <laughs> so I, I, see, I see thoughts as, as like this storage container. Uh, uh, and, it, and it holds like, like, like whatever you put Whatever you put in there. Now, Jesus said it this way in Matthew chapter 12, verse 34. On a count of three, let's read it aloud. For out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. So what is he saying? Whatever occupies your heart, that's what you're going to say. Now, the Bible often, it's, it's not just your physical heart. The, the word heart is often defined as the place of one's being. It's the mind of the individual. It's a storage of thoughts and feelings. This is the storage of your identity. And so Jesus said, whatever is stored in your mind, whatever is stored in your heart, that's what you're going to speak. Now watch how this works and watch how Satan deceives us. Satan says, bam, you ugly. Oh. I guess I am ugly. Bam, you ugly. <laughs> I got nothing better. I got nothing better. That's all I got. And then, and then you agree to it. I guess I am ugly. Bam, you ain't worth anything. I guess I am worth nothing. You don't deserve to live. Why should I live? And over a period of time, since the day you were born, Satan has brought these lies upon you. And little by little, you agree to it and make it a part of who you are. Then what happens when the wife yell at you for not cooking her breakfast pancakes with chocolate chip cookies? And now you want to reconcile, but because you have negative things stored in your heart. When the wife says, babe, you didn't make, you didn't make any chocolate chip pancakes for me. <laughs> and you dig from this reservoir of negativity. And you respond the way you respond. Why? Because you filled your thoughts and your heart with the deceptions and the lies of Satan. Okay, bam, okay, enough, 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 all right. What, what's, what's, the, what's the out? I need an out. I need an out because that's some heavy stuff. Like, what, what sets me free? When you understand this, you have now identified the battlefield. It's not in what you say. The battlefield's in your mind. It's where you store all your thoughts. And so now your prayers are even deeper. You're not saying, like, Lord, bridle my tongue. You're saying, Lord, wash my mind. Lord, wash my mind. My identity is based on these lies that Satan had thrown my way and I've agreed to it. You're a generational curse. Hmm. I guess I am a generational curse. You'll never be as good as your brother. Uh, I guess I'll never be as good as my brother. Who do you think you are? Some sort of preacher. I know your past. I remember you under the mango tree. I've seen what you did. I've seen the hurt that you've caused. Yeah, I guess I am a bad person. And you agree to it and you make it your truth. So what's my out? Well, this is the battlefield. And if we know what the battlefield is, that means that 
we can break free from these curses of vocabulary simply by changing our mind. Jot this down. You change your mind, you change your life. That deserves an amen. I'm going to say it again so you can respond. Here we go. You change your mind, you change your life. <laughs> Praise the Lord. You change your mind, you change your life. Okay, okay, okay. How do I change my mind? What, what, what do I need to do to change my mind? Well, the Bible teaches us. That's what I love about Jesus. The Bible teaches us about changing our mind. So in Romans chapter 12, verse 2, on account of 3, we're going to do a little Bible study here. I hope you don't mind. On account of three, we're just going to read the scripture, and I'm going to kind of break it down. I'm going to bamify this, this scripture for you so that you can uh, go home understanding it. So here we go. Romans 12, 2. And do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is that good an acceptable and perfect will of God. Let's, let's, just, let's just do some vocabulary stuff here. The word conformed means to twist. To twist. And so Jesus is saying, do not twist yourself with the world. Have you ever braided hair? So you, you're twisting yourself in the ways of the world so that you become one with the world. And so Jesus said, don't, don't twist yourself. Don't get it twisted. Don't twist yourself with the world. But be transformed. That word transformed is from the Greek word metamorphosis. Blah, 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 blah. English is my second language. Metamorpho. And so that's where, metamorpho. And so that's where. <laughs> stay on track, bam. Stay on track. Okay. That's where we get the English word, if you remember science, metamorphosis. And do you remember the, the example that every science class gives for metamorphosis? It's when the caterpillar metamorphosizes into a butterfly. It's a completely different form. So no longer will you have to crawl on your belly for the rest of your life. In Christ, you got wings. You can fly. Yeah, Warren G said it. If I got wings, I can fly. Let me contemplate. So a completely different, metamorphosized, different, changed individual. Well, how do we do that? Well, the Word of God says by renewing your mind. What does the word renewing mean? The word renewing means renovate. It's like going into a house and you renovate it. To constantly renovate. It's actually made up of two Greek words, anakinosis. Renovate, renew. Anakinosis. Kinosis means to make new. Anna means again. It means repeat again. Make new again and again. Make new again and again. You will never get buff just going one day at the gym. You will never get abs by doing one sit-up. You will never lose weight by doing one jumping jack. Anachinosis means to make new again and again and again and again and again. Make new on Sunday. Make new on Monday. Make new on Tuesday, make new on Wednesday, make new on Thursday, make new on Friday, make new on Saturday, make new on Saturday at 12, Saturday at 1, Saturday at 2, Saturday at 3, Saturday at 4, Saturday at 5, Saturday at 6, Saturday at 7, Saturday at 8, Saturday at 9, make new again and again and again and again and again, make new again. Every day of your life, make new. How many of you were here, were here were born perfect? Just me. <laughs> you got to make new again and again and again. So jot this down. You break free from the negative self-talk by, number one, replace negative thoughts daily with God's word. Replace negative thoughts daily with God's word. I'm going to share with you something that I, that I, that I think has, has permeated our culture in Hawaii. And we got to be really careful of it. There's a difference between ancient East meditation and Judeo-Christian meditation. There's very different. The ancient East meditation form is to empty your mind. Empty your mind. Now, I have an issue with that because Jesus said, when you cast out a demon, the demon will go and wander. Right? And then the demon will come back and the demon finds the house all nice and neatly swept. And so the demon goes, invites seven other demons 
and they all come back and hang out at this house, and the state of the second is worse than the state of the first. Why? Because when the demon came back to the house, he saw that it was nice and neat, unoccupied, empty. So I wouldn't recommend that as a people of God that we just empty our mind. Not good. Because if you empty your mind, chances are Satan will come to you as an angel of light and he will say, hi, how you doing? You look so cute. Is that all right if I step into your mind? And you think it's good for you, but it's actually demonic. Praise the Lord. So, so how, what's the Judeo-Christian version of meditation? You don't empty your mind, you actually fill it. Well, how many of you guys know that your mind is like my mind, just full of all kinds of stuff? Negative stuff. Yeah, I wasn't born perfect. I, I, I wasn't born a Christian. I became one. Hello, somebody. I had to be born again. Amen. Yeah, I had to be born again. And so, so in my mind, I was like, man, but God, I, I, I got stuff. I got negative stuff in my mind. And so he says, well, you got to renew it. How do you renew it? The word of God. You got to fill it. Okay, so you show up on Sunday. You're like, bro. That sermon by Pastor Bam PB, that was probably the best sermon I have ever heard. And so you, you, you're like, man, that was so good. But, but you stopped. And then you leave on Sunday. And you're like, that was a good word. But I still feel there's some stuff in there. Like, I just heard a good word about negative talk. But every other word has been negative. <laughs> well, something has to happen from Monday through Saturday. And so what do you do? Well, what? Pray to God and read his word. Yeah. Say, God, Holy Spirit, help a brother out. I have no idea. Well, whoa, something's changing. <laughs> but I still feel that there's stuff in there. So get more of God's word. You're not emptying your mind. You're actually filling it. And you're like, whew, okay, I feel the change. Sweetheart, I love you. You are the best in the world. There's some things. There's some of you guys. <laughs> you need the hand of God to get in there. <laughs> like, wow. You need the hand of God. And so you continue Monday. Again, renew again. And again. And again. And again. And again. Hand of God. Again. And again. And again. And again. And again, keep going, keep going. There's still a little bit left. Man, I just feel like, oh, she gets me so angry. What's wrong with her? Does she care? What's the last time she prayed? Again, again, you continue to renew it. You continue to fill your mind with God's word. Now, he pours out his spirit upon us. And you know what's so cool? Is the end product looks like the source. <laughs> Boy, I gotta tell you, man, people get paid billions of dollars <laughs> teaching this stuff. I give to you for free. So you gotta, what I mean by renew your mind daily with God's word. And watch when Satan goes, and when you, 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 that's what he sounds like after you've been renewed. You don't even understand him. You're like, wow, God, it's like a mosquito queen. You, you are, you're ugly. I got nothing better. I got nothing better. That's all I got. <laughs> but because my mind is now filled with Christ, I don't buy into the lie. I reject it. Amen. Come on, somebody praise the Lord. Yeah. Woo. That's so good. I am going to go home and watch this live stream and hear myself preach this to myself again and again. I'm going to watch this live stream on Monday, on Tuesday, on Wednesday. <laughs> now, okay, okay, that's a, that's a cool visual aid, Mr. Preacher. So, so, so what can I do practically? Because I, I need some help. Tell me what to do. I am going to give you something that will free you. Ah, it's going to cost each and every one of you $100. <laughs> now, I'm going to give you something, something super practical that will free you. From negative talk. But, but remember, you got to do this, though. You got to renew your mind daily. I'm going to give you what I call the secret sauce to free yourself 
from the negative self-talk. I don't usually give my secrets for free. Bro, but because I love you, I give you this so you can break the bondage of negative self-talk. It's what I call just flip it. Jot this down. Face it and flip it. Face it and flip it. For the rest of your life, listen, for the rest of your life, Satan is going to say negative things about you. For the rest of your life until Jesus comes back. He is an adversary. He is an accuser of the brethren. And so you are probably going to wake up and Satan's like, you ugly. You're such a discouragement. You're such a generational curse. Why do you even go to church? Who cares about you? For the rest of your life, you're going to hear Satan just speak negative words over you. But now since you are filled, face it means that you're not afraid of him. You're courageous to stand and face it. You're not going to cower. You're not going to run away. Flip it means this. Whatever Satan says to you, just flip it and you'll be free. Okay, okay, okay. Here. So Satan goes, I have the mind of Christ. So Satan goes, well, bam, you ugly. Flip it. I'm handsome. <laughs> just, just flip it. Just flip it. Just flip it and you, you'll be free. Bam, you're a loser. I'm a winner. Listen, just flip it. Just flip it. Just flip it and you'll be free. You're such a disgrace. Woo! I'm full of grace. Just flip it. Just flip it. Just, you're a generational curse. Huh? Woo! I'm a generational blessing. Come on, somebody. Just flip it. Somebody, you should die. Ah! I should live. Just flip it. Just flip it. Just flip it. No one likes you. Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. The Bible tells me so. So listen, listen. To be free, just flip it. Come on. Somebody say flip it. Flip it. Flip it. Flip it. Just flip it. Whatever Satan says, flip it. And you'll be free. Come on, let's give God praises. Yeah? So remember, 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 remember. When you flip it, you nullify the curse over your life. When you flip it, you put an expiration date on Satan. When you flip it, you claim freedom in Jesus Christ. Flip it and you'll be free. Negative words destroy. Negative words come from negative thoughts. So replace your negative thoughts by God's word. Don't just settle for attendance on Sunday. Read his word daily. Pray to him daily. And then when you have on the mind of Christ, have fun in flipping Satan in Jesus' name. Amen. Come on. You receive that? Let's go, Hope Chapel Corner. Heather, would you mind joining us? That's all I got. That's all I got. Come on. Somebody praise the Lord. That's all I got. That's all I got. That's all I got. So would you just please stand? I know you're all hungry. You want to go home and eat. Just stand and let's close. And high five your neighbor and say, that was good. That was good. That was good. That was good. <laughs> yeah. Thank you, Lord. I want to leave you with this. Um, <clears throat> don't settle for less. I'm very fortunate that I have my daughter that keeps me in check. I am very fortunate that my daughter would not allow her dad to settle for less. And she calls me out on it. She's my checkmate. <laughs> she puts me on check. So don't do life alone. This right here, it's visually, yeah, it looks easy, but man, it's a daily battle. It's a daily grind in our mind. So don't empty your mind. Fill it with the things of God, his grace, his mercy, his love, his goodness, his joy, his patience, his kindness. Fill it with the things of God and, and you watch all the negativity begin to fall off. And once you have the mind of Christ, it's a powerful thing that you can simply flip it. The difficulty is doing it on your own. 
Find an accountability friend. Someone whose standard is higher than what you're living. Just allow that person to help you renew your mind daily, again and again and again in Christ Jesus. Amen? Amen. Well, let's bow our heads and let's, let's just close. Father God, I just thank you for just the illustration of how powerful you are to remove the negative thoughts. Really, Lord, as the ping pong balls are falling off, that's, you're just uprooting things that have been planted into our hearts from, for many, many generations. Some of it even, even our parents or our grandparents. But Father God, I thank you that we are born again. All things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new and you are sanctifying every day our minds, making it more and more like yours. And so, Lord, we pray this, that you would just help us along the way. We know there's an adversary that continues to speak negative things over us. Strengthen us not to agree to it, but also to flip it and recognize the freedom that comes through Christ alone. We thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name. Could we just sing this chorus one last time? Uh, say, Jesus, I love you. Jesus, So, Lord, we thank you for this filling, Father God, and we thank you that your presence is ever so near. We thank you that your Holy Spirit lives and dwells in us, and you're working out the old and putting in the new. And so we ask, continue to renovate again and again and again and again and again and again our minds, Lord, so that the things that we say are words of life and life more abundant. We love you, Jesus. And we thank you for this day. Today is good because you're good and you're in it. We praise you. We honor you in Jesus' name. Come on, Hope Chapel Kona. Let's give God a praise and say amen. Yes, Lord. Praise the Lord. High five your neighbor again. High five your neighbor again. That was good. That was good. Hey, if you need to check out your keiki, please check them out. Otherwise, we might sell them to somebody. <laughs> so go and check out your keiki. We love you, Hope Chapel Kona. Thanks for joining us. God bless you all.